5646 was one of the first bottleneck cartridges. It was a rimfire field bullet design like a big version of the 22 long rifle cartridge we use today. It was developed at the Springfield Armory in 1864. And although it was not utilized in any military application, Spencer adopted it to most of his sporting rifles. Looking up examples of the 5646, we see case length, bullet diameter, shoulder setback, overall cartridge length dimensions are all over the place. But you can really see a need for an organization like SAMI to standardize ammunition. So the first gun we're reloading for is an early factory sporting rifle. These guns weren't produced until late 1864 and they sold new for about $45. The second gun is a gunsmith conversion of a new model military action. It sports a 26 inch octagon barrel and a Spencer set trigger. So it's obvious we're going to need a little more information on internal dimensions. So we're going to get some uh, Creosave and we're going to do a chamber cast. Then we get a, get a soft lead slug and uh, drive it down the bore to get the groove diameter of the barrel. So, utilizing the information we got from our chamber cast and slugging the bore, we've come up with two very different cartridges. The cartridge on the left is for the factory rifle, and it has chamber dimensions consistent with the Buffalo Arms. 5646 cases and the accurate mold company's 5646 bullet. We used a cleaning rod to get an idea of the barrel twist and came up with a 1 in 24, which is actually very respectable for a gun of this period. Now, on the right is the bullet for the new model sporting rifle, which is quite a different animal altogether. And it slugs out to 48 caliber and the barrel twist on that gun is approximately 1 in 52 which would be more appropriate for a Hawken muzzleloader. So for propellant we're going to use uh, some Shockey's Gold 3F which is just another form of American Pioneer powder. It loads like black powder by volume not by weight. And for the factory sporting rifle we're going to cast a bullet from an Accurate Molds Company Mold 47265S. And then for the uh, new model, uh, we had a custom mold made by Accurate Mold Company to fit the bore of that gun. And then for a case for the uh, factory sporting rifle, we're going to use a Buffalo Arms 5646 case. And then for a case for the uh, new model, we are going to form a case using a Starline 5650 case and then back in the sizing die off a little bit to make that one work. And then for our primers, we're just using a Winchester Large Rifle Primer and then uh, CH4D 5646 dies and uh, Imperial Sizing Wax for all our resizing needs. So these cases are uh, 5646 from Buffalo Arms. Uh, the dimensions are, seem good except that the uh, rims are a little too, too thick for the action to close so I had to uh, thin the leading edge on the rims on these. So this is just an observation, it may not be correct, but it uh, seems like the earlier guns that don't have the spring assist on the extractor blade need the wider rims of the 5070 case to uh, extract reliably, where the uh, later guns with the spring, you can use the uh, Starline 5650 cases for your base, and they work uh, quite well. So your powder charge is actually dictated by the capacity of your case and the bullet you're using. You can tweak the powder charge somewhat by uh, adding a vegetable fiber wad to uh, lessen the charge or you can use a drop tube or compression die to increase the charge.
So let's weigh this uh, accurate 47265S bullet. Let's see what we get for a weight. Looks like uh, 271 grains. So for bullet lube, I'm going to use white label 455510, 45 ALOX, 45 Pace Wax, 10% Mineral Spirits. Now, I like this because it, it kind of leaves a non sticky coating similar to what you find on the 22 rifle ammunition and so you can just tumble loop your bullets and let them dry or in, in this application since we're using a healed bullet you can just paint it on the bullet after the bullet is loaded. So the seating stem on my uh, die set really doesn't match the profile of my flat nose bullet and since I cast my bullets fairly soft this uh, stem seems to be marking my, my bullets up somewhat so I've actually uh, replaced this with the uh, flat nose expander stem from my uh, RCBS set for the 4570. So I'm just using the, the flat nose of that stem against the flat nose of the bullet to seed it. And that seems to be working okay. So uh, we'll, we'll go ahead with that and see how that works. form a case for the new model, I'm able to use a Starline 5650 case because I won't have any extraction issues. And what I did is I had to back out the full length resizing die. And the way I came to that uh, adjustment is trial and error. So I'm just uh, lubing up the top of the case and then I'm just resizing the neck area so that it'll hold the bullet and it'll fit into the chamber. And I can uh, prime it. So we started the heel part of the bullet down into the case, but since the bullet is too wide for the seating die, I just mounted a piece of steel to the top of my press and then I'm going to just use the flat nose of the bullet on the flat surface of the steel to press fit the bullet into the case. So out to the range for the moment of truth we're going to uh, test fire these the take a hard look at the uh, spent case for any signs of trouble and, and then we're going to test for function and then we're going to put some uh, rounds on paper to, to see how they're doing and hopefully we'll have some ammunition left over to, to have some fun with. Well, here's the paper results of our first test of the 56-46 ammunition in the uh, Spencer Sporting Rifle. On the right, that's our, our first 25-yard target. And then on the left is the 50-yard target. And I, I used a peep sight on that for the first time, and it needed a little adjustment, but I didn't have a fine screwdriver, so I had to use some Kentucky windage. But uh, I'm uh, overall I'm pleased for the first attempt we can still uh, tweak with a powder charge and we can tweak with the uh, bullet hardness and a few other things so uh, all in all I'm uh, uh, quite pleased.
So, this is the new model sporting rifle, which actually turned out to be a 48 caliber. We were able to have a custom bullet mold made to fit the groove diameter of the bore and back off the sizing die enough to form a usable case. But I'm not sure if we can overcome the slow rifle twist to achieve really great accuracy. But a 300 grain bullet over a charge of 45 grains of black powder is a pretty respectable cartridge for a repeating rifle of this period. So, this is the first six shots out of the gunsmith converted new model 5646 Spencer. It has an oversized bore and it has a really slow rifle twist, which are both uh, potential problems. But, uh, I think with a little load development, uh, I can tighten this group up. But uh, the cartridges uh, function well through the gun, no problems there, which is always a plus for a Spencer. And, I'm uh, satisfied with this one also. Well, you might not be cranking these rounds out on your dilling, but you can see that most of the problems can be overcome in one way or the other. So this is my first experience with the 5646, but it's it's just nice to see these final rifles shooting again.